Hey, what up guys? It's your boy Kflo. Today I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the universal joints and the center support bearing on your Toyota Tacoma. Let's get this started. The Toyota Tacoma has a two-section propeller shaft. Therefore, you have to actually order three universal joints when you do this repair. Because if you're going to replace one, you should replace all of them as well. And since the propeller shaft is getting pulled out, you can also order the center support bearing, which is only another $40. And all of these materials will be in the description below. The first thing we got to do is chalk the truck to prevent it from moving forward and back. Next, we find the propeller shaft and then we clean the surface with a brush and mark the flange and all the mating parts to make sure we can put it back in the proper orientation from how we removed it. I would actually recommend using a bright color permanent marker instead of a black sharpie. Next, I take jack stands and place it right underneath the propeller shaft towards the back and right in the middle. We then go towards the back of the truck to the rear diff and locate the four 14 millimeter nut and bolt and undo all of them. I used a closed end of a wrench and a pipe to break those nuts loose. I finish off with the ratcheting closed wrench to finally undo all four nuts and bolts, ensuring not to lose the washer in between. We can now take a hammer and give the flange a light tap to release it from the rear diff. Next, we move towards the center of the propeller shaft and remove the center support bearing by undoing the two 14mm bolts. We make sure to support the shaft and slowly rest it onto the jack stand. Now we can pull the shaft further away from the diff. Next, we put the truck in gear and undo the 14mm nuts that connect the shaft to the tranny. Once you undo what you can, you have to put the truck back in neutral so that you can reposition the shaft. You put the truck in gear again and then undo the rest of the nuts. Once all of the nuts are free, you can use a hammer and a pry bar to completely separate the shaft away from the tranny. Make sure you use some plastic bags to prevent debris from getting on the flanges of the rear diff and of the tranny. Now to push the U-joints out, you'll need a bearing press, which you see here. It can be rented from your local auto parts store for free. Now let's move on to the U-joints. First, remove the retaining clips on all four sides using a long nose and a small screwdriver. Warning, use safety goggles. These things shoot out very far and very hard if the grips slip from those needle nose pliers. Next, you use a bearing press to push onto the center of the U-joint until it pops out of the back. Then, we can remove the press and rotate the shaft itself so that you can pull the bearing from the other side using a pair of channel locks. We take the bearing press again and push on the joint in the opposite direction so you can pull out the other needle bearing. You repeat this process until you have the U-joints completely removed. In the case that there is a grease fitting, you have to remove the retaining clip first and then undo the grease fitting. Once we have all the U-joints removed, we can then move on to removing the center support bearing. I first take the breaker bar and feed it right through the ears of the yoke. Next, I use a 24 millimeter socket to remove the securing nut. Next, I mark the stud and the yoke so that we can put it back to the proper orientation. Now, we can take a hammer and hammer off that yoke from the propeller shaft. We take a hammer to loosen the outer ring of that center support bearing, and then you can actually pry it off by hand. Then take a large pin punch and work that around the bearing so we can push that bearing right off of the shaft. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick second to talk about this video's sponsor. 
This video is sponsored by me, KFlow. So if this video helps you out, make sure you check out my Patreon page and consider donating. It does take a lot of effort to put these videos together, and these videos will save you several hundred dollars from the trip to the mechanic. So hopefully you guys check that out. The link is patreon.kflow-crib.com. Now let's get back to the truck. Once removed, we clean all the surfaces with a rag and apply wheel bearing grease to all the surfaces. Next, we push in the new center support bearing as well as the yoke ensuring that I line up all the marks that I made earlier. I then take the hammer and hammer that onto the yoke using a socket until all the mating surfaces are flush. We can then put some blue Loctite and reinstall the 24mm nut and tighten that down to 100 foot-pounds. Now we can prepare all of the yokes, starting with a wire brush and wire brushing off all of the dirt and using a clean rag to remove all the grease. I didn't get a good shot here, but you can also use a flat head screwdriver to clean the grooves where the retaining clips are supposed to sit. We can then inspect the yoke for burrs just like what you see here and use a file to flatten them down. Now we can take the U-joints and remove one of the bearings as you see here. Inspect inside, make sure that none of the needles fell inwards like this. If they did, take a screwdriver and just push them back against the wall. We use the bearing press to push that bearing partially into the yoke. We then rotate the shaft and take the U-joint and remove the opposite bearing so we can insert the U-joint in between the yoke. With the U-joint aligned, we can press the opposite needle bearing in place and then secure it with the retaining clip. We can then rotate the shaft again, hammer the other needle bearing in using a socket that's slightly smaller than the outside diameter of the needle bearing and secure that side with a retaining clip as well. We do the same thing to the last two remaining sides and here's a recap and a different camera angle to hopefully make you guys see it a little bit better. This time I removed both needle bearings and was careful not to have any of those needles drop inside. I press one of the needle bearings into the yoke only partially. This allows me to install the universal joint by first getting the bottom of the U-joint into the open ear and then getting the top of the U-joint to sit into the needle bearing as you see here. We can then rotate the shaft and install the opposite needle bearing as you see here using the press. Once it's fully seated, we can then reinstall the retaining clip using the needle nose plier. We can then rotate the shaft again onto the opposite side and then take the socket and the hammer and then fully press in that needle bearing. We can now install the retaining clip and finally install the grease fitting. We can now take our grease gun and grease that U-joint until grease starts overflowing out of the boots. We then take a clean rag and clean off all of those excess grease. This process is repeated for the last two U-joints. Now that all the U-joints are replaced, we can now reinstall the propeller shaft back onto the truck. I started with putting Loctite on the studs of the tranny side. Then I installed the shaft, ensuring that I line up the marks I made earlier. Then I installed the washer and the nut, and tighten all four nuts to 65 foot-pounds. I made sure to do the final tighten in a cross pattern. Remember, you need to put a truck in gear to tighten the nuts and put it in neutral to rotate the shaft. Just a quick note. I had to use a wobble socket extension so that I can get a torque wrench to work. This one I picked up from my local Harbor Freight. Then I installed the rear of the drive shaft to the diff, ensuring that I aligned my marking as well as apply Loctite to the bolts before I tighten them down to 65 foot pounds. Remember, tighten them down in a cross pattern. Now we can install the center support bearing. Make sure you rotate the bearing itself so that the wider side is on the lower side towards the ground. We can install the two 14mm bolts with some Loctite and tighten them down 
to 27 foot pounds. Thanks for watching this video guys. I just have a few quick tips to leave with you before you go. And the first one is you never ever want to hammer the shaft while it's being supported on the shaft. See the shaft is balanced and any type of external force you put onto it, it will damage it and will get it out of balance. Number two, my truck is lifted so I did not actually have to use the jacks and a jack stand to get it up high off the ground because it was tall enough for me to bring that propeller shaft down and clear the bottom of the truck. And the last tip I want to leave with you is that some of the hardware, some of those nuts and bolts might be a little bit seized. So you might have to use something like a liquid wrench to help loosen them up or maybe even a blowtorch. If you guys want to see any type of particular repairs, you can also leave them in the comment section below. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for me because that does also help me out so that I can continue to make more content for you guys. So until next time, peace out.